One of my favorite homes to talk about is modular homes and modular home construction. I believe it is the solution to the affordability crisis here in the United States. But when people ask me about it, I haven't really broke down the budget of what you really need to know or the real costs of building a modular home. Those numbers that I probably gave you three years ago do not apply today because as you know, there's been supply chain issues throughout the United States that have changed the cost of modular construction. And I'm gonna give you some news about modular construction and some really good practical advice Advice. So if you are in the market of getting a modular home, you have this knowledge to take with you. But if you're still confused on what the difference between a modular home or a manufactured home or a stick built home is, let's just jump over here and I'm gonna explain it to you right now. Okay, let's straighten some things up. So this right here, is what they consider traditional home construction. You see bulldozers come in, you have contractors come in. They also refer to this as stick frame building. So if any time you hear in the video, I say stick built, this is what I'm referring to because you know, the little matchsticks when it's framed, that's what this looks like. Now this right here, this is considered a manufactured home. It's made in a manufactured plant. Some refu people refer to them as a mobile home or a trailer. Uh, the reason why you don't want to refer to them that way is because these homes that are built today that are called manufactured homes are built to completely different standards when, than the ones that you would consider a mobile or trailer home. Any home that was built before 1976 is going to be considered a trailer home and mobile home is just one of those names that people just started calling them. It wasn't ever a technical name for these specific types of homes. Now, if the stick built home and the manufactured home had a baby, this is what it would be. It would be a modular home because, okay, so it is constructed on site. The, these homes are, it does have contractors like you would for a traditional stick built home. It's built to the same specifications as a stick built home, but most of the parts in each room are put together in a factory, much like the manufactured home. It has more more of the DNA of a stick built home that it does a manufactured home. It just so happens that if you meet the two together, this is what you get is a modular home. And I'm so happy I have an excuse to use this uh, green screen that I've had for over uh, five years. <laughs> All right. Now we got that out of the way. Let's talk about the prices because that's what you're really here for. The real cost of modular homes are way different than they were three years ago. Just to have it delivered, it costs between $5,000 and $15,000. To have your land repaired, that can be twelve between $1,250 to $4,500. Your foundation, this is gonna be depending on how much concrete costs, that can be between $4,000 to $10,000. And it can even go up from there. To have the installation of the house put in with the contractors that are putting your house together, that can cost as little as $25,000, but up to $50,000 thousand dollars and in some places it can even be higher than that now to have your utilities done for the construction that can cost as little as three thousand dollars if you're very lucky it can cost as much as twenty thousand dollars taxes once it's built can cost as little as three thousand dollars but as much as ten thousand dollars permitting fees depending on your state can cost as little as five hundred dollars but up to five thousand dollars any additions you want to add to your modular house can cost as little as seven thousand five hundred dollars i'm talking about like driveways porches, decks, those kinds of things. So as little as $7,500, but it can go all the way up to $50,000. It depends on how fancy you're gonna make your modular home. But that is still being very, very, very conservative. That's because of inflation and home prices across the United States have gone up as well. Everybody knows, we've heard the news everywhere, supply chain. It isn't just affecting your food costs and your gas prices and everything else, it's affecting the housing industry exponentially. The other Another thing I want to caution you about whether you're considering buying a brand new modular home, a brand new manufactured home, or a constructing a brand new home. There is delays. Before the pandemic, typically you could go into a showroom for a modular home. You could design the whole thing out. Within about three months, they could start the whole process and you could have it done within six to seven months maximum. Now that process has been stretched out exponentially. Even for a manufactured home, which would have only taken just a month or two, to just to have that delivered to your location. It's taking 15 to 20 months for some manufactured home companies to get out those homes that are already built in the factory and then they're only connected two parts. So when you break down all the costs for a modular home, it can seem like they'd be a little bit less expensive. But once you add in all those extra things that you don't realize and time delays, you find out you end up spending 
the same, if not more than a regular house at this time. Anybody that's watched my videos before, you know that I absolutely love modular construction. I think it's the way that we can get out of the affordability crisis because you can actually put out a lot of homes a lot quicker with modular construction if they had the materials, which it's been a problem recently for that to happen. The thing is right now, modular construction is not cheaper, it actually could be more expensive for you than actually building a house yourself. So you're thinking, well, why don't I just go ahead and build a brand new house instead of buying a modular home? There's a problem with that as well because a lot of new home builders have a wait list that's miles long for you to get onto it to build a brand new home. Not only that, you could be contracted to purchase the house at $200,000. By the time that the house is completed, the builder has upped that price. Tim Dickon and his wife are among an increasing number of home buyers out there seeing their contracts canceled by a price escalation clause forced to walk away when the cost of the home they'd contracted to build at $525,000 soared to more than $700,000. And you didn't plan for that. And as a builder, they're not going to take the loss of $50,000 because it took them longer to get those materials to the location itself. It really stinks right now. That's just the way that home building has been going lately. And the builders have to regain that money back. And But that's no different with modular construction as well. If you read the fine print in all of these contracts, it says that if the building materials have increased in price, that price goes on to the consumer, not to the builder, and they can do it. Now, here's a warning sign though. If the modular construction company that you're working with is asking for a large sum of money ahead of time to hold your spot, that's that's a red flag. They shouldn't be asking for anything more than a small deposit, depending on the price of the home itself. Now, you want to make sure that that deposit is refundable as well and have it in writing because if they can't deliver the product that they promised you within that time frame, you want to be able to get every single penny back from them. You know, some contracts and some modular home companies, they're going to say you put down this deposit, it's non-refundable because you're making your own modifications to their specific floor plans. You're going to have to weigh that out if that's something that you really want to do. Another thing too is if you're working with a modular home company and you don't have a lot of referrals from that modular home company or you don't know anybody else that has owned a home from them, that's another thing that you need to really consider. Always, always, always check out these reviews. I've said it in many videos beforehand, a lot of modular home companies are startups and they only have computer renderings of the house itself. If you're unsure if it's a computer rendering, take the picture itself, blow it up really big, and then you can really start seeing that it's actually a computer image. And if the salesperson cannot provide you with real photos of the house on the outside and the inside, that is another thing you really need to be cautious of. Now, I've had a bunch of phone calls recently about some modular home companies that say that you can buy the modular home from them, but you're gonna have to rent the land underneath it. There's a place out of Texas that is doing that. To me, that's something you should be very cautious of because at any time they could raise the rent for that specific piece of land and you only own a house. The type of loan that you would get for that specific modular home since the land is rented would be considered a chattel loan and your interest rate on that is going to be a lot higher as well. Now, just here recently, I had gotten a call from somebody that was asking me about what was called a modular hybrid, which it really wasn't a modular and it really wasn't a manufactured home. So they were telling me on the phone. What they said was that they were taking a manufactured home, but bringing it up to modular specifications. Now, if you want a true modular home that doesn't come with a tag and doesn't have a HUD sticker that's sitting in the uh, breaker box itself. Ask them, what do you mean by a hybrid or a manufactured home that's built to modular standards? Ask them if it's actually gonna come with a tag. The reason I say that is because the type of home insurance that you're gonna be getting for this house is going to be different for those two specific homes. Not only that, when you go to get your loan, it's going to make a difference as well because if you're getting a manufactured home, that loan packages for a manufactured home are gonna be different for a modular home. A modular home will finance just like a traditional stick built home when you're building it brand new, even when you go to resale. Not only that, in your tax records, you do want it to say that it is a modular home because for resale value, people want to know that they're buying a modular home that's built to stick built standards. When people are buying a manufactured home, they know that they're buying a HUD certified home. It's completely different and built to completely different building codes. So with this hybrid, you want to make sure that it doesn't have the tag on it and it doesn't have a license plate that needs to be registered. Two totally different products. So if it, they're trying to sell you on a hybrid, have them explain that exponentially because it just, that seems a little off to me. Like what are they doing to these manufactured homes to make them all of a sudden a modular home? Because they're 
two totally different products. So I don't understand how that even works. If someone works in the manufacturing home industry and can explain to me what a hybrid uh, modular home is, it, to me, it just sounds a little sneaky, a little sales tactic-y. I don't know, something's, something's amiss there. Now, I know a lot of you have been looking at modular homes and you want me to give you some specific reviews of modular companies I have worked with in the past. Here's the thing, every single state in the United States is going to have different modular home companies that work for that specific state because they have different building codes. Not every modular home company that I'm aware of is probably going to be delivering or building in your specific state. If you are looking at a modular home company and you're unsure of them, please check out their financials. Some modular home companies or prefab companies have a lot of really good press, but that doesn't mean that they're actually making homes and they're putting them on the market. One of the biggest ones that people were raving about not too long ago folded, just like this NBC article shows. Katera, Bay Area startup that styled itself as a kind of Tesla for housing, declared bankruptcy last year after raising $3 billion from investors. The Information Tech News website reported the company fell short on sales goals and employees exaggerated financial reports. Who knew that like people would actually exaggerate things? The article goes on to say another Bay Area startup focused on modular construction called Rad Urban went out of business last year despite a promising start. So you know I love modular homes. Would I buy and build a modular home right now? If I had to have a house, I don't think I would. The wait time for these is so long and the price at the end could be totally different than what it was when you went to purchase it in the first place. All these things would make me nervous, especially if I was on a limited budget. So I need to know if you're one of these people that have been looking for a modular home and have been investigating it because you've been watching my videos. Are you still considering buying a modular home this year? Or are you going to be looking at other options? Let me know in the comment section below. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.